Julio here, and I've got 10 rad Lightroom CC tips that you got to know. So if you want to up your game with social media, you want to up your game with client delivery, or just have more fun processing your raw files, this video is for you. Roll that intro. With Lightroom CC, you can capture, edit, organize, and share regardless of what platform you're on. So it works on mobile, it works on tablet, and it works on a desktop, of course, and it even works in the browser, which is pretty dope. So no matter where you are and what piece of uh, technology you got in your pocket, you're going to be able to do your editing. And in fact, if you have a smartphone, what's really rad is that you can actually access the camera and shoot raw photos. And what no one talks about is raw HDR photos. It's super rad because what it does is it shoots three DNG files, sends them to Creative Cloud. Creative Cloud organizes them and makes sure that they're not overlapping. And then we'll download it back to your device as a encapsulated DNG within that is the three original captures. It's pretty sick. I know I'm not explaining it the best, but it's pretty sick and it gives you a ton more dynamic range with your smartphone. Now you have to have a smartphone that supports it. Most of the newer ones do, but let me tell you, I've done some shoots. It looks fantastic. So in a pinch, the HDR is dope. Lightroom CC will automatically back up all your work to the cloud. And if you have it set up right with your desktop, your desktop will back up another version on a local or an external hard drive. You just gotta set that up afterwards. So contrary to what a lot of people think, not all of your photos are stuck in the cloud. You can have them stored locally too. So not only do you get your local storage benefit, you also get a nice cloud backup. That's how Lightroom CC is able to access your raw files regardless of what your device you're on. It's pretty rad to know that when you're shooting in a field, if you're putting it on your smartphone or your tablet, that it's backed up to the cloud. And then if you have your workstation running at your office, it's automatically downloading those and saving those to your hard drive. Mm. Now, one thing I will say, if you are um, using an additional backup service, that is an ideal scenario. I use Backblaze. So Backblaze then takes all the photos that are downloaded from the cloud to my workstation and will back them up to the Backblaze cloud. So I have a second location of all my backups. Now, Backblaze goes above and beyond that. It actually backs up everything on your system, including your OS, any additional drives you connect to it. And it's only like 50 bucks a year, so it's super worth it. You just gotta have patience because it takes a lot of time to upload all your stuff. But cloud backup, local backup, all in the same uh, raw processor, Lightroom CC, bala! All right, tip number three. Lightroom CC can be used with Lightroom Classic as part of a complete workflow. You don't have to have one or the other. It wasn't designed to do that. They're designed to work together. Reason being is just say like, you know, in my position, I have 150,000 plus files in my master Lightroom Classic catalog. That is beyond the maximum limit of cloud storage that Adobe offers for sale, which is 10 uh, terabytes. So I could not store all my photos and videos and everything in my master catalog in the cloud, although I would like to, although I, I should say in, in Creative Cloud. It is stored in Backblaze, but not Creative Cloud. So you, what you do, what I like to do is I like to put my photos on my phone or my uh, tablet, my iPad Pro when I'm in the field, because it's light and easy to carry and I can get an initial edit done and I can quickly share. But then I know that it's backed up to my workstation here locally. And then from there, you can export your RAWs right into your Lightroom master catalog and have it in there nice and safe, however you like to work. So you can go from your uh, mobile device to Lightroom Classic or from Lightroom Classic if you want and put them on your mobile device and work on them on the go. It's a workflow uh, scenario here. So it's not either or, it's together. They buddies, buddies. Tip number four, Apple Pencil support. And if you're on a Microsoft Surface Pro, 
it supports that pencil as well. But Apple Pencil support. Ooh, I'm bending it. This is pretty dope, guys, because you could use your Apple Pencil to paint in localized adjustments with brushes, which is what I do a lot um, for my own work. And then depends on the assignments if there's budget or not, because you know, homie here ain't working for for free, right? And I need that that Skrilla. But this is great because you can do the work on your iPad Pro. It synchronizes with your desktop. If you're on a Windows machine, you can use it on your Surface Pro. It synchronizes with your desktop, synchronizes with your phone. So it's pretty dope, right? You don't have to like get complicated. You can just get to work and all the tools are the same. It's just like, <sighs> tip number five, we're coming alive with tip number five. Tip number five, with Lightroom CC, you could share photos and albums with clients and friends and whoever you want to share with. This cannot be understated how awesome this is. I did a shoot for a client. It was actually one job was 20 shoots in a week. The only way I could have delivered 20 shoots in a week without like losing my my, my, my noggin here would um, was with Lightroom CC. So I would do the shoot. I would get into my car. I would have a cold beverage and upload the photos through um, my data connection to Creative Cloud, Lightroom CC, do my work. Then you could, I would flag the images. And in advance, I had the galleries already set up. And I gave the links to the client. And I had the gallery set up so that they would only show flagged images. So only the pics is what the client would see. So I would go through the images. I would make my pics. And then there they were, ready to go. Any adjustments I needed to make, I would kind of do them on a the fly. But here's another 5B tip. I would also hit the auto adjust just to kind of see where it landed and often it landed good. So it was just like, they were so happy. Like we cannot believe that you were able to get this all done in a week. And you know, like a boss, but I've done them to share with clients or with other clients and family and whatnot. You could choose the color of the background. You can choose the layout. You could share from your phone. You can share from any device. It's so handy. And if you have your, um, a good catalog going, you know, if somebody hits you up and you need, they need an image, you got it right there and you can put it on a gallery and so forth and so on. All right. It's tip number six. Tip number six. Six. Not sex. Six. Lightroom CC optimizes your photos for social media. That includes the resizing, the compression, the whole shebang. Oh, Peter. It optimizes it for socials. So if you go on YouTube and you're like, how to optimize photos uh, for social media, you're gonna get all these convoluted ways and spend all this time having to learn how to crop it and compress it and then airdrop it to your phone and stop it. Just hold on. <sighs> Just stop it, folks. Lightroom CC on iPad, Android, iPhone, your mobile devices built into the OS is a share ability, yes, to go from your device to social. So you want to share to socials, to Instagram, wherever. It, it does it all for you. Just share it. Put in whatever rad caption you want to put in about your taco cat and you know, out it goes. Now, if you're taking your socials a little more seriously and you're using a tool like Buffer or Hootsuite or Later or Planoly or any of those social media planners, you can send it directly to that service and then those services will automatically post at the best time or whoever you have it set up. But it's such a huge time saver to not have to worry about how to resize and all that's all built in. The land of tomorrow is today, today, today. Please, please tell me you have an Adobe portfolio site. Why don't you have an Adobe portfolio site? You're paying for it. Anyways, an Adobe portfolio site is a website that's your portfolio of your photography. Social media changes, folks. It changes. And it's going to compress your image and it's going to, they're going to do all sorts of weird algorithm things to your photos. The center of your social media galaxy is your website because that way you can show the images exactly how you want them to be seen. You can write about them exactly what you want to have written. It is a pure representation of you in your body of work. That's where your photography lives on to speak 
for you when you can't, right? So you need an Adobe portfolio site. If you don't have one, I'll link to it below, but it's, it's a free, it's free, it's part of Behance. And the dope thing is, unlike other websites, like I run Small Camera Big Picture right now off of Squarespace, but you have to export your photos, import them into Squarespace. You know, it's just more steps, and over time that takes up a lot of time. With Adobe Portfolio, once your website is set up, you do that on your desktop through the browser, then you can share from Lightroom CC um, albums, and you can say share directly to Adobe Portfolio. And then what Adobe Portfolio does, it says, hey, we're optimizing this for your website. We're optimizing the size, the compression, the whole bit. You don't have to do anything. Do you want to also share it simultaneously to Behance? And it's like, well, yeah, of course. And if you're not on Behance, I'm not going to say something that rhymes with pants, but if you're not on Behance, get on Behance. It's a cool social network. It's not a very active one, but it's another place that you could post your work that'll help your SEO, that'll help get the word out about what you do. And it's free and it's effortless once it's set up because you could share it from CC right to your portfolio site. And, and I should do a whole video on Adobe Portfolio. So I was a beta tester back in the day when I was just a Behance product. And it's been, it's been dope, but you can have unlimited Adobe portfolio sites. So if you're a wedding photographer and you want a website for your street photography, bingo, bango, no additional costs. It's all yours. You got to pay for a URL if you want a custom URL, but you want maybe a place to show your fine art. You can use Adobe portfolio to show your Adobe stock images. So if you want to kind of have a little side hustle or an experiment for stock photos, it'll power that too. It's pretty rad. And here's the thing, like when you want to make changes to a current gallery, you just do it through Lightroom CC and then it'll update it through the cloud magic to your Adobe portfolio site. This is a dope thing, folks, and it's built in and you're you're paying for it. You might as well use it. Lord have mercy. It is great, folks. You know that. I know that. We can lie to ourselves, but let's not lie to each other. Directly from Lightroom CC on mobile. You could share to Spark Post, Spark Video, Spark web pages. If you're not using Adobe Spark and you're paying for it, Adobe Spark Post is what I use mainly to do all the poster frames and graphics for my websites. Um, I'd use it for, it's kind of like Canva, if you've ever heard of Canva. You can use it for social media. You can make posters, uh, frames for YouTube. It comes with templates that you can remix. And I mean, they're super easy to remix. If you upload your logo with your branded colors, it'll sample the colors for you. You just kind of hit the remix button and it'll remix it automatically. You're like, you know what? I like that one and I'm done. And I'm done. Oh, and by the way, folks, if you want even more out of Adobe Spark, you can animate the graphic that you made with your photo. And it's, these are built-in animations. It's super easy. It's made for speed and, and effectiveness. And I, it's just one of those apps. I'm like, damn, this is so good. You could also do the same type of thing with video. Okay, so if maybe you're not a video editor. Maybe you don't play a video editor on TV, but you want to do some sort of video. There's Adobe Spark Video, and you can share right from CC into Spark Video. You can share into the, the Adobe Spark Web and make like cool landing pages and stuff. You know, for your Adobe portfolio, just saying. So anyways, it's if you're not using Spark Post or anything, use it, use it. Thank me later. You know, send me some money or something because, you know, I'm an artist for God's sakes. Anyways, Spark Post is super legit. Tip number nine. Nine. Interactive tutorials inside Lightroom CC. Now, at first I was like, eh, grumpy. I don't know. I don't teach me nothing. But this is pretty rad. So whether it's a, an educator that's certified by Adobe or one of their influencers, an employee, they make these interactive tutorials in Lightroom CC. You can watch them use the app. It's kind of like they take control of the app and you can see exactly how they're working to make their edits. And then some of them you can actually work on the edits yourself uh, and they walk you through it. It's pretty sweet. I'm not seeing anything like this. It's a great way to learn little parts of Lightroom CC uh, quickly. You can do them on a plane if you have Wi-Fi. Maybe not, but you know, you get what I'm saying. It's, it's super dope. So built in app tutorials. I think it's super cool and I hope to see it in more apps from Adobe. Are you hearing me? Presentation of Inflammation Incorporated. No, 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 no,
Tip number 10. For some of you are gonna be like, well, yeah, duh. But for a lot of people, I don't think a lot of people know. And so I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you as a gift from my heart, I'm gonna give you this knowledge. Lightroom CC, regardless of what platform it's on, if it's on your smartphone, your tablet, your browser, yes, you can use it in a browser, your desktop, it all works off of the same Adobe Camera Raw engine that powers Adobe Lightroom Classic, that powers Camera Raw and Photoshop, that powers it in Bridge, it's all the same. So your qual the quality of your files is not different if it's on mobile, just because it's mobile. It's not different if it's on desktop because it's desktop, it's all the same. And that's what's amazing to have that kind of power in your pocket with your images. You know, if you ever get like, just like, you, maybe you're kind of hanging out somewhere and you have an idea of, oh, it's gonna be cool to process this, you can do it, you could do it. It's amazing. Maybe you're like, hey, I wanna try those new rad high performance profiles and presets that Julio made called Dynapack that are made specifically for Micro Four Thirds and have the color science of a professional colorist built in along with an hour plus tutorial. Buy now, buy now. I know you could do that and it's it's just pretty rad like to, to know to get the quality that you need to get and not have to worry about is it going to be the same it is the same it's running off of adobe camera raw yes so that is it folks we went through 10 rad lightroom cc tips that you should know we covered a bit about how to do it the whole workflow with lightroom classic how to share the web how to share the socials how to share adobe portfolio behance how to deliver to clients I hope you dig the video. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. If you want me to dive more into a particular topic, leave me a comment below if you got. And if you want more cool stuff in the comments, I'm gonna put some linky links, linky links for you guys to explore. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate your time. It is um, an honor for me to be able to uh, come into wherever you're consuming your videos and help educate you and hopefully hopefully inspire you guys to take some action this is julia and i will see you later bye bye, bye, -bye. Hey, i'm just kidding where am i going it's my own freaking house